Hi everyone, I'm Belinda Kirkpatrick. I'm a naturopath and a nutritionist, and I specialize in women's health, hormones, and fertility. So today I thought I'd chat to you about hormonal imbalance. What are the signs of hormonal imbalance? How do we know if we've got a hormonal imbalance? You know, what can we do about it? So many women come to me saying, I feel like my hormones are unbalanced. And it's a really sort of common thing for people to kind of think without really being able to put their finger on why they think they're hormonally imbalanced or what actually is going on for them. So some of the most common signs of hormonal imbalance are things like irregular or absent cycles. Okay, now a regular cycle is somewhere between about 26 and 32, 33 days. So irregular doesn't mean that you don't have Either you have to have, sorry, like a smack bang on 28, 29 day cycle every month. If you've got a sort of, you know, 27 to 32 day cycle, that's still considered regular. It could be heavy periods or painful periods. Remembering that just because something is common doesn't mean that it's normal. So really heavy periods and painful periods are common, but they're not normal and it signifies there is some probably kind of hormonal imbalance going on. Very light periods can also mean an imbalance. Spotting before your period or mid cycle. So when I say before your period, I don't just mean for half a day before, but it might be like two, three, four days beforehand, you know, that you wipe and you just get like a little bit of kind of spotting. Um, that can be a hormonal imbalance. Low energy, low libido, low mood or mood swings, irritability, anxiety, depression, acne and skin breakouts, headaches, and then fertility issues as well. So I feel like that kind of just covers so many symptoms. And it's like, well, you know, am I getting headaches because I've got a hormonal imbalance or am I just kind of getting headaches? One of the best ways to kind of really ascertain whether some of your symptoms are hormonally related is to actually kind of track them. So, you know, keeping a bit of a diary because I think a lot of people are used to the very premenstrual symptoms and symptoms they're getting with their period and they can really relate those back in. You know, I get a headache just before my period every single month or my period's very painful, that's quite obvious. But if actually, you know, you're getting really bad bloating and breast tenderness mid-cycle, sometimes you don't really kind of associate that with your period. But the more that you actually kind of write it down and track it, you're like, oh, hang on a second, every month mid-cycle I'm getting these symptoms, so maybe they're my ovulation symptoms. And if any of these symptoms are interfering with your daily activities or your relationships or um, stopping you from doing anything, they really should be um, um, checked out. And hormonal health is just so important for our general health and wellness. As women, we sort of going through these sort of hormonal cycles every month. Um, you know, the hormones are rising and kind of falling. And with men, everything's just so much kind of more flatlined. Here's a heap of testosterone, work with it. Gives them energy, helps their mood, supports weight loss, um, supports muscle gain. Once we start to kind of understand our menstrual cycles though, we can kind of really work with them and sort of almost seeing them kind of like see where we kind of ebb and flow with them. So around the middle of your cycles, probably when you're going to be the most energetic, probably the most outgoing, um, great time to be doing, you know, high energy things, hit classes and things. Just before our period, we tend to be a little bit more tired, a bit more introspective, maybe a little bit more hungry, and it might be time to kind of do more sort of yin yoga or gentle kind of exercise. So working with your cycle, rather than just kind of, you know, storming through all the way, can actually make a really big difference to your, to your symptoms. Symptoms. So how do we know and how do we kind of test? So there's definitely blood tests that we can be doing to look at our hormones. Now, yes, doing a urine test is more accurate. I'm not big on saliva testing. Um, that doesn't have great research on it for hormones. It is quite good for cortisol and the adrenal hormones, but the reproductive hormones tend to kind of be better in urine. Now, those urine tests are quite expensive and not everybody needs to do them. So I'd absolutely be just starting with kind of basic bloods. Now, a lot of people come to me and they've got blood tests and they say, this is my hormones, what's going on? And I say, okay, thank you. Where were you in your cycle when you had these done? And so often they're just like, oh no, I can't remember. I just did them on the day that I went to the doctor. Because our hormones are rising and falling all the way through the month, it's really important that we get our hormones tested at certain times so that we can compare them and so that we know what they should be looking like at that time. So day two or three of the cycle, so the second or third day of bleeding is what we consider to be called baseline, okay? So everybody's just at the same point. We're all just kind of had our period. Nobody's about to ovulate. 
roll that same kind of point. And that's a really great time to get your estrogen, your follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, your luteinizing hormone, LH. Um, you can also get your prolactin, your androgen studies, testosterone um, done at that time. And so what we want to see is that your FSH and LH is fairly kind of balanced. Estrogen's not too low, not too high, um, and that your testosterone and androgen's are nicely in range. What we then want to do is test our progesterone a week after ovulation. Now, if you don't know when you're ovulating, that's really difficult to kind of work out. You're probably ovulating about 14 days before your next period, also hard to work out if you don't have a regular cycle. And so it's most commonly tested on day 21, but that's of a 28 day cycle. So if you can work out when a week after ovulation or a week before your period is, that's the best time to test progesterone. And if you've got a nice strong progesterone at that point, that's a good sign that your progesterone levels um, are not too low. It does get tricky though, because sometimes people will have say perfect levels of testosterone or estrogen on blood tests, but yet their symptoms tell otherwise. And when you're working with an experienced practitioner, they're going to be able to help you to navigate that. So for instance, things like environmental estrogens that we get through perfumes and plastics and things like that, they're not actual estrogens. They're not gonna measure up as estrogen on a blood test, but you may be getting estrogen dominant symptoms from them. With testosterone, for example, your testosterone levels might look normal, but you may have high testosterone receptor sensitivity, and actually you're getting those testosterone dominant symptoms despite having normal testosterone. Now, those things are really kind of complex. You definitely don't need to be working those out at home. I'm just saying that sometimes when you're like, no, no, no I definitely have hormonal symptoms going on. I've definitely got this kind of really clear cut picture. I've got excess hair growth. I've got oily skin. I've got acne. I'm quite moody. Um, my hair's sort of dropping a bit. I've got very much these testosterone dominant symptoms, but yet my blood tests say my testosterone's fine, so it should be. I'm just saying that it may not always be that simple and somebody, a practitioner, can actually help you to still work out what's going on and to be able to work with those symptoms. So when we get the, the blood test done, what we do is we get this full picture of our kind of like hormonal health. The reference ranges are really wide. So being within the reference ranges doesn't really mean anything at all. And most people will need a practitioner to kind of work with them and interpret their results. Remember that optimal health is what we're aiming for, not just like a lack of ill health, but at the same time, we don't need to get those numbers perfect. We're not robots, we're not textbooks. Not everything has to kind of be exact. If you're feeling like you've got, you know, really kind of good hold of your symptoms, you're feeling really balanced, you might notice like a little general ebb and flow through your cycle, but it's nothing kind of terrible, then you probably don't need to be digging for something that you know isn't isn't kind of really there. So remember those blood tests are just giving us a snapshot of what's happening in that month at that time, and that can change, but it can start to really help us identify what's going on. Is it high estrogen? Is it low estrogen? Is it low progesterone? Is it high testosterone and androgens or low testosterone and androgens? They also kind of work on a bit of a seesaw. So if estrogen's too high, progesterone can be too low. Um, and if estrogen is low, Progesterone is usually also low, to be honest, but you know, so, so these things are kind of working together. So start tracking your symptoms so you get an idea of what's happening through the month. And that way, any things that you're doing, improving gut health, working on your diet, taking supplements, you know, exercising more, drinking more water, even just those basic things, you can actually start to see the difference that they're having on your cycle each month, which is really exciting.